Did you contradict yourself recently? I did not. You didn't? But you. Did I? Oh, yes. (laughs) Don't point that finger at me. (laughs) Speaking slowly so you can understand Just a couple of teachers just doing a thing Speaking slowly so you can understand Just a couple of teachers and a cat just doing a thing Just two teachers and one cat. Two teachers, one cat. Do you speak English to your cat? Yes. Yeah. I almost always speak English to her. You do? I mean, it's weird English. I mean, I have like little songs that I sing. It's time for breakfast. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. No, I sing like kitty, 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 cat, kitty, kitty, cat, <laughs> kitty, 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 cat, kitty, cat, cat. Kitty cat cat kitty 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 cat kitty cat cat kitty 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 cat kitty kitty cat cat kitty kitty cat kitty kitty cat cat kitty cat cat kitty 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 cat kitty kitty cat kitty 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 cat kitty cat cat is is that English? Uh yes. I guess so. Mm, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. With that Indian flavor. Do you speak English to your dog? Yes. I say, who's my little snozzle wuzzle guzzle boy? Come here. Right. <laughs> we speak these kind of weird languages to our pets, don't we? We do. Making up strange words. Yeah. It's the same for babies. Right. Yeah. You have kind of baby talk. Who's my little poo poo pumpkin? <laughs> right. Look at you. <laughs> hmm. Anyway, Ben. Yes. In today's episode, Mm -hmm. I want to talk about contradictions. Ah, contradictions. Yes. Okay. To contradict. To contradict. Means to say something and either say or do something the opposite later. Right. Right. And you can contradict yourself. Yes. Yes. Did you contradict yourself recently? I did not. You didn't? But you. Did I? Oh, yes. (laughs) Don't point that finger at me. (laughs) Many times. Did I? Apparently. Uh We've done now almost 110 episodes. I think this is number 110. Oh, okay. Yes. 110. We have some listeners Uh who... They listen once, and then they listen to the same episode again, and they can understand and catch more of what we are talking about. That's a good way to do it. Yeah. I think. Yeah. And one of our listeners, a lovely lady down in Hiroshima. Oh, great city. Has said, wait a minute. Oh, no. Ben is always contradicting himself. Hang on. Whoa. I want some evidence. Okay, some evidence. Well, she sent me a list. A list? Yes. (laughs) She sent me a list of your contradictions. Okay. She's, uh, wow, she's following very closely. So I want to take you back to episode 100. Okay. Not very long ago. No. Probably you remember. My memory's not great. Well, you came to my house for this big 100 celebration. It was fun. You had tiny beers. <laughs> I had a bunch of beers. Yes. You. Yes. Showed up empty handed. I did. I did. It was very rude. You I, didn't bring any beer. I didn't, but I apologized. Kind of. Here's what you said. Let's go back in time. Let's hear it. You didn't bring any drinks. Oh, yeah. Oh, you've run out. I thought you'd bring at least a couple beers or something. Do you know how I got here? On your bicycle, I guess. No. Subway? Yes. Yeah? I caught the train. Yeah? 
It's the first time I've been on a train in about two years. Really? It was very weird. Yeah. Two I felt, years? Yeah. You haven't been on a train for two years? No. So. Okay. As an excuse for not bringing any beers, <laughs> you said you came on a train. First of all. It's the train's fault. I don't understand how that is an excuse for showing up empty-handed. I thought you're not allowed to bring beers on a train. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do, you know. You said that you haven't taken a train for more than two years. Well, let me correct myself. I think what I meant by that was I hadn't caught the subway in two years. Okay. Now let's go to... <laughs> I don't like this. This is like a police interrogation. <laughs> <laughs> now I'll take you back just over one year ago. Okay. One year, not two. Like, I definitely don't remember this. Uh, this was our episode about White Day. White Day. Go back, back, back. Take me back. I bought some delicious coconut cookies. Ah. Yes. So she got chocolate and cookies. Yeah. But funny thing, when I got on the train, I didn't realize my baby was holding something. Can we cut the pram? <laughs> the baby struggle. And I was like, what do you <laughs> Well, when you got on the... The, the subway train. The subway train. Yeah, the subway train. All right. Hey, good catch, Hiroshima lady. You got me. I'll admit. She got you. She got me. She got you. Yeah. She, uh, she got me good. You made a mistake. I made a mistake. You contradicted yourself. I did. I did. I'm, I'm only a man. You're only human. A human. I apologize. So you said you wanted proof. And you served it up. I gave you your proof. On a platter. Yes. <laughs> proof. You look really happy with yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and let's see, another one of your but contradictions. There's more? Jesus Christ. <laughs> what are you doing, Hiroshima lady? You're killing me. <laughs> in our episode long, long ago, mm. that was called Dirty Birds in the Park. Dirty, yeah, Dirty Pigeons. Yes. Yeah. You were feeding the birds in the park. I was. And you were feeling like you were... The like, bird whisperer. That's right. Yes. A bird whisperer. Like you have some kind of special ability to communicate with birds. I do. And I, I can control birds. That's part of it. No, you can't. Well, I think I can. Well, yeah. you said in that episode mm -hmm. that you were enjoying your time until the damn crows came. Ah, uh, yes. The darkness. Yes. Yeah. And then you ran away. Right. Because the crows ruined the party. They did. Damn crows. Damn crows. I like crows. See? I do. Now you're contradicting yourself because in episode 86. Ah, uh, yes. At I 19 minutes and 30 seconds. I remember well. You said crows are cool. I love crows. Crows are cool. I love crows. Here's the thing. What? I was talking about how I hate crows. They're noisy. Yeah, I hate them. Well, you hate, they're noisy. You hate that part. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. You don't hate, really hate crows. And I think yeah. just because you wanted to contradict me. Oh, I see. You wanted to contradict me. Yes. I was being what we call a contrarian. Yes. Yes. A contrarian. That's right. The kind of person that always wants to say the opposite of what other people say. Hate those people. Hate them. You're a contrarian. I am not. I am not. Only for me. No. You're an Abe contrarian. You're Across. a contrabian. <laughs> contrabian. You're a contrabian. You want to contradict Abe. Oh, contrabian. Yes. Well, to in... Contrabe means to contradict Abe. That's a new word. Contrabe. To contrabe. Very specific. 
let me defend myself. The crows on that day ruined the bird party. Yes. They did. Because I was communicating with pigeons only. Okay. And the crows arrived. And they ruined the pigeon party. They ruined the party. So at that moment, you hated crows. I hated them in that moment for what they did. Okay. But when I said I hate crows, mm-hmm. suddenly you love crows. I do love crows. They are one of my favorite birds. But you're not only contradicting me. Yes. You're contradicting yourself, you damn contrabian. It's a double contradiction. <laughs> Well, no, I don't accept that. The first contradiction with the train, okay, I'll admit I was wrong. But I don't hate crows. No, I hate it when they ruin my pigeon parties. But do I hate crows? No, I don't. Okay. Okay. So you were purely just trying to contradict me. No, not at all. I never said I hate crows. Okay. All right. I never did. I said the crows ruined my bird whispering. Your party in the park. My party in the park. With the birds and the bread. Yeah. I was having a good time with birds and bread, and the crows came and ruined it. Okay. So you're not a contrarian. If I was to go back and comb through to look very carefully... Come through yeah, yes. our previous episodes. I'm sure I could find some evidence of you being a. Con- doesn't work for Ben. Contrab. Con- uh, a ben Ventrarian. Okay. <laughs> a Ventrarian. Well, I think if. Contrasian. I had contradicted myself. Yes. The lovely listener in Hiroshima would have pointed that out and said, look, look, look. Abe's doing it too. Well, lovely listener in Hiroshima, your assignment, your homework, if you choose to accept it, your mission impossible is to find evidence of Abe's contradictions. Don't waste your time. As Ben just said, it is mission impossible. Well, so was Tom Cruise's missions, but he he did them. That's true. You know. Okay. Yeah. Well. So be Tom Cruise. Okay. Hmm. All right. And then one last contradiction. Jesus. In episode 98. Yes. I was talking about my march to sobriety. Ah, yes. Which I realized was kind of a contradiction. There you go. You pointed it out. It was... More of just a mistake. Okay. That I wasn't marching to sobriety. Right. I was marching to getting drunk again. To alcohol. Yes. <laughs> I was sober for two weeks. Yes. Two weeks? Two weeks. Oh, it was. was the second... I think it was 17 days. 17 days. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I completed my goal. You did? Yes. In March. And now you're drinking again. Anyway, you said, oh, wow, two weeks, no alcohol. Oh, I could never do that. I've never even gone for one week without alcohol. Oh, God. (laughs) And our friend in Hiroshima said, what, 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 what? Wait a minute. Who Who is this lady? What about when you had the Rona? And you were locked in your in your house mm-hmm. for ten days with no alcohol. Ah, well, well, well. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lady H, but you, Madam, are wrong. <laughs> yeah, you are wrong. Uh, because I received a special delivery from who was it again? You, yeah, <laughs> you dickhead. <laughs> Very kindly brought me a bottle of finest whiskey known Teacher's to man. Whiskey. Teacher's whiskey. Yeah. He came to my front door, left it there. No. Ding dong. And I I drank that bottle and then some. 
Yes. Yeah. After a few days, you were feeling perfectly healthy. Sure. But you had to quarantine. I did. Yep, I did. And so I, was... I came and I brought you a bottle of whiskey to ease the pain. You did. You did. Yes. And uh, also, my uh, some of my in-laws also brought me some alcohol. Right. Your brother-in-law dropped off some beer for you yeah, right? a lot that's nice of him that's nice he brought he brought like a huge box of snacks and beer and f- all kinds of delicious food my mother-in-law some pre-cooked food yeah because the food sent by the government is absolute crap it is it's survival zombie survival food it's just like really cheap pre-made curry super cheap yeah corp like supermarket brand curry. Right. Uh, microwave rice. M- microwavable rice. Microwavable rice. In those little plastic packages. Which is actually not bad. No, it's, it's rice. fine. It's fine, that rice. Yeah. And I, I, I told you at the time I received three huge boxes from the government, one yeah. for each person, me and my two boys. So... In the end, I had about 50 packets of microwavable rice. Well, I've, you especially don't need rice because your wife's family are rice farmers. I married into a rice farming family. Right. So they yeah. send you as much rice as you need. Unlimited rice. Right. Unlimited. It's raining rice in my house. Anyway, don't worry, Ben. I contacted her and I told her. Now, actually, Ben's not contradicting himself. I went and gave him alcohol. That's right. While he was quiet. Thank you, Abe. You you stood up for me. But uh, You defended me. Don't get the wrong idea. Okay. This listener is a big fan of yours. Oh. She loves your music. Thank you. And she loves your dancing. She does? Episode 109 and 110, we're doing video. We're back on YouTube. Back, baby. We're back. Uh, she says she likes to watch the video and try to copy your dance moves. Ooh, I bet she slows it down, slow motion. So she Yeah, well, I... Thank you very much for listening, for being a fan. And you know what? I can take it. I can take it. I don't mind. People pointing out my contradictions. Bring it on, I say, because it helps me to be a better man. Oh, well. That's what I do. Positive mental attitude. PMA every motherfucking day. Oh, yes. PMA all day, every day. That's, That's the way. That is the way. That's what they say. That's what they say. Whether you're straight or gay. Straight or gay. Positive mental. Action. Whether the sky is blue or gray. That's PMA right. PMA all day. Absolutely. So anyway, Ben, those are the contradictions. Well, singular, one contradiction. Uh, I'll take the train. Look, okay. Crows, no. Uh, alcohol, no. So one out of three, not bad. All right. Better luck next time. Now, you said earlier you hate contrarians. Uh, Yeah, well, it's annoying. It is annoying. It is annoying. When you're hanging out with a contrarian. Yeah. They never want to agree with anything. They don't. Yes. They seem to enjoy an argument. Yes. They want to contradict what other people are saying. And argue about it. That's right. Sometimes they want an argument. Sometimes they like to have a unique position, you know. Sometimes maybe they just want attention. If everyone says, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, me too. Yeah, I agree. Maybe that one person says, nope. Right. I think it's stupid. And everyone's like, what? And then they pay attention to the contrarian. That's right. Uh, Sometimes people are trying to be what we call devil's advocate, to play devil's advocate. To play the devil's advocate. Yes. That's when you're contradicting someone for open thought and discussion. 
That's right. So you don't really believe the opposite opinion. But in order to explore the idea, yes, you bring up the opposite opinion just so that you can solve any future problems. That's right. Yeah. So you say, well, to play devil's advocate. Yes. And then you say the contradicting opinion. Exactly right. Yes. And that can help you to, yeah, think about your original opinion and, yeah, explore it, test it. To play the devil's advocate. To play the devil's advocate. It means yes. I'm not saying it's my opinion. Hmm. But imagine, imagine this other contradicting opinion. That's right. It's right. always important to think about the opposite opinion. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, contrarians are important in a way. They it, are. It, it opens deeper discussions and, you know, it's important to have people who disagree sometimes. That's right. If you are surrounded by people and only talk to people who have the same opinions as you. We call this an echo chamber. Yeah, because yeah. the same things just echoing. Like. And you don't really yes, progress. Yes, yes, mm. yes, yes. Yeah. This is like an echo. Everyone says yes. Everyone's saying the same thing. And you never have a chance to explore or think about new ideas. If there is a contrarian... Yes, yes, yes. No! Mm, shut up, contrarian. <laughs> Get out of my echo chamber. Chamber, chamber, chamber. <laughs> Still, contrarians, super annoying. Does your wife ever contradict you? Oh, all the time. Is she a, is she a bentrarian? She is a little bit of a bentrarian. Yeah, she can be. She can be. Sometimes my wife can be a contrarian, especially when she's angry with me. <laughs> so she becomes a contrarian when she's angry. Yes. Suddenly, all of my opinions are rubbish. <laughs> They're all garbage. They're all wrong. They're all trash. And the other day, she was quite angry with me. But her anger was understandable. Oh, so you did something... Stupid. Stupid? Stupid. Oof. Yes. What did you do, Ben? Well, the weather's getting warmer. I now live in a house with a yard. Oh, yeah. And in a yard, there are ants. Well, you've done a lot of great work on your yard. I've been transforming the yard, landscaping. Yeah, I was very impressed. Thank you. That you were able to move all those rocks and trees. Well... If you can see on the YouTube, one of my fingers is smashed. My nail is black. Oof. Yeah. You crushed your finger. I crushed my finger with a 150 kilogram stone. Oh my God. Bang. Anyway, working in the garden, I destroyed some ants' nests uh, under were. the ground. Ants' nests. Yeah. You disturbed them. I did. I did more than that. I completely destroyed them. Did you? Yeah. And so they were homeless ants. Oh, God. Yeah. Nothing worse than a homeless ant. They ran into your house? They came into the house, <laughs> no. a big trail of them, the bedroom, the living room. We're moving in here, guys. They're coming Let's in. go. And they were heading da -da, for the kitchen. Da -da, da -da. Oh, there's food. Now, I love all creatures on this earth. Except ants. No, I love ants. Okay. <laughs> And Hiroshima lady, don't try and find any evidence to the contrary. Uh, I respect ants. They're the hardest workers in the insect world. And I like them when they're outside, but I don't like them in my house. That's war. Ah, uh, yes. You cannot let ants in your house. Yep. Uh, they're actually very hard to get rid of. I know. And I said to the ants, you want war? Well, you're going to get war. Anyway, why was your my wife mad at you? Because you did yard work? I mean, it's no. not your fault the ants went into the house. It's not, but it is my fault that I decided to vacuum them up with my vacuum cleaner. That makes sense. Suck them up. Yeah. And then I put the vacuum cleaner away in the cupboard. I didn't empty the vacuum cleaner. 
So all the ants were alive inside the vacuum cleaner. Hundreds and thousands and millions and billions and trillions of ants. <laughs> and so during the night, they crawled out of the vacuum, oh, down no. the hose, out of the end. Really? And they were everywhere in our cupboard. Oh, no. Where we keep the vacuum and other things. Oh, so your wife knew right away. Yeah. She was like, why didn't you empty the vacuum bag? Well, I was still in bed and she had gotten up and she went to the cupboard and I could hear, Nanny got her! Oh, really? What's this? She started screaming. So I pulled the blanket over my head and I made a little safe house for myself <laughs> and I closed my eyes <laughs> No one can find me in here. Oh, so how's the situation now? Is it under control? No. I'm exploring some natural ways to stop ants because I don't want to use any chemicals. You have to be careful because you have a dog. Dog, baby, kids. Yeah. You know. You don't want to use powerful poison all around your house. I don't like them anyway, these poisons. So I tried some chili oil mixed with lemon and vinegar. So basically, I put everything strong in my kitchen into one <laughs> bottle. I'm like lemon juice, Just salt. Things that are acidic and spicy. What do they love? Sugar. Food. They love food. What's the opposite of sweet food? Salt and lemon and chili and that stuff. Maybe. Any, I don't know. So I put it all in a bottle and shake, shook it up. Shake, shake, shake. And sprayed those fuckers. And it worked for one night, and my room smelled delicious. The next morning, they returned. Oh. So In how's it going now? Greater numbers. I'm trying one more thing. One of my students told me about a magical tree which grows in Aomori. It's called the Hiba tree. Your wife might know about this. Wow, never heard of it. Traditional Japanese insect repellent. Oh, okay. Yes. Interesting. Interesting. So the oil from this tree, mosquitoes hate it, ants hate it. So I ordered some Hiba tree oil, and we will see if it works. Yeah. Probably won't, and I'll have to use poison. Well, good luck. Thank you. I'm fighting the fight. Yes. The war continues. Has your wife calmed down? She's calm. She's calm for now. She's not mad at you anymore. That's right. But it's like a tiger. You know, you, you think they're calm and you go in the cage and it's all fun and you're, you're touching your tiger and then... <laughs> <laughs> they kill you. You never know. Yeah. My like, kitty like, cat's just... She's attacking you and now she's going into your suitcase. Yeah, she loves to, she loves to sleep and sit anywhere where I sit. Hmm. She likes to steal my seat right? or my bags. Okay. My backpack or my suitcase. She just jumps in there right away. Maybe you should take her to Osaka with you. I'd love to. Mm. Yeah. You could put her in your pants, down inside your pants. No. With a little snack. No. Hmm. She'd scratch put some, uh, Put some cat food. On your, uh, all around your, your penis God and your ben. balls. Okay, we're done. You just lick. Okay. Let's say goodbye, Ben. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. Okay, <laughs> F-E-E, Teacher Talk, Instagram, Twitter, uh, 55freebird.com. Come get an online lesson. Check out my events. Uh, I do have some t-shirts left, various sizes and colors. Yeah, the, the supply is getting less and less yes it's yeah dwindling dwindling supply supply is dwindling it's yeah. almost gone it's almost gone hurry up if guys you're lucky i might have your color and size check it out 55freebird.com <laughs> Amina we no more.